everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael. What I have for you today is from... Lenovo! This is the IdeaPad Slim 7. It's not a new model from Lenovo, but it is the latest version of it with a low-powered Intel Core i5 CPU and an even less than mainstream NVIDIA GPU. Is it going to be good enough for all of your low-powered and ultra-portable PC needs? Let's find out. This then is the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7. It houses the latest low-power Intel Core i5 1035G1 CPU that has 4 cores, 8 threads that feed off of 6 megs of L3 cache at up to 3.6 gigahertz. It works in tandem with the NVIDIA MX350 GPU with 2 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM. 8 gigs of low power DDR4X RAM, cache your crap, and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD, store your crap. These bits rest underneath a glossy 14 inch 1080p screen and are juiced by a 60 watt hour battery when a wall plug is in absentia. The battery can keep this Lenovo breathing for about one and a half hours while gaming and over eight hours of constantly streaming video while using Windows Max battery settings. I didn't bother to test internet work use this time because that. Slim 7s aren't exactly available in abundance but can eventually be found and bought for just below $800 for one like this or over a thousand for one with a Core i7, more RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. The right side gives us a micro SD card reader, two USB 3.0 Type A ports, one of those can charge your phone, and a grossly misplaced power button. On the left, there's the USB-C charging port, full-sized HDMI, Thunderbolt, and a headset in. Thunderbolt is a saving grace here, so you can have a hub to give you what other ports you're missing, like more USBs and display outputs. And that power button really is a pain in the ass. While plugging in and removing peripherals like my Xbox controller or flash drives, I've inadvertently turned the damn thing off at least three times in the last week. It's absolutely pestiferous. Thanks, Google. The AC adapter is relatively petite and channels only 65 watts at a decent length away from the wall, I'd say about 9 feet out of the box. If you replace the from the wall cord with something a little longer, you're looking at about 12 feet, which would be very, um, not pestiferous. The whole body is wrapped in posh plastic with a metallic finish that's smooth to the touch and gives good friction. It'll only showcase abundant finger oil and won't look dirty until you give it a second glance. The plastic on the keyboard keys looks similar but feels slightly cheaper and succumbs more easily to staining. I'm willing to bet the finish here isn't going to stay perfect in a year's time if not graced by a cleaning cloth every once in a while. The chassis strength doesn't impress under duress and the display has a satisfactory amount of flex under strain. Overall it's nothing that'll drive you crazy and you know what? It's good enough for weighing only 3 pounds or 1.4 kilos. The bottom cover gives way to the knotty bits after seven torque screws are removed. You'll definitely need a splunger or whatever, and a dash of confidence to get past a stubborn adhesive. From the inside looking in, we see that there are two fans and plenty of heat pipe, a bold move for a thin and light, and the NVMe SSD is wrapped in a comfort blanket like a snowflake in a safe space. Don't worry, orange man bad can't make you overheat now. At least there's a second M.2 slot for even more SSD storage options. And what can't we see here? Memory! There's no accessible RAM to upgrade. You're stuck with 8 gigs unless you got deep pockets. The keyboard on the Lenovo Slim Jim 7 feels pretty nice. The keys are very silent and take a decent amount of force to press. They don't exactly melt under your touch, so if you're used to a mechanical keyboard like me, you'll have to slow down a bit. The white-ish backlight has two levels of brightness with little differentiation, and neither are overpowering. There is also absolutely no numpad, not even one in the letter keys accessible via hotkey. Speaking of hotkeys, the F1 through 12 are swappable, and home and end page scrolling keys are secondary functions of the arrows. I've complained about that before, but now there's no numpad to fall back on, so whatevs. 
Manipulating the touchpad doesn't produce any ill impressions. The movement is predictable, natural, and it doesn't get in the way while I'm typing. Right click is easy to find, gestures are easy to use, and behave the way you expect them to. If it had physical keys, it would be perfect. Oddly enough, there's no hotkey to disable it, and you'll have to dive into Windows' own settings app to get it to disable when you plug in a mouse. Looking at the display is a better than average experience. I understand that it's awesome on paper being IPS and touting 100% sRGB. The bezels at least are nice and thin, it tilts back 180 degrees, and 300 nits is nothing to sneeze at. I just can't stand how glossy it is, and the brightness fades at a pretty close angle. Pro tip, if you're going to put out a glossy screen in 2020, make sure it's a touchscreen, cause it's not here and it's not even available in the $1200 Core i7 version. To end on a high note, it gets well more than comfortably bright, dim enough for a pitch black room, and media is a blast to digest thanks to the great contrast ratio. The noisemakers on this Lenovo are excellent. They fire through top facing grills and have volume, clarity, and bass. They're not some of the best speakers I've heard, like the Dell G3s, but they're definitely very close. Despite the fact they have comprehensive range of hertzs, there's still software being used to pull bass tones into the treble range. You can tell because the heavy guitar parts don't pop as much as they should. Still, the bass from Rage Against the Machines Calm Like a Bomb is loud and proud, and the deep bass from A Perfect Circle's The Package is audible and can be felt through the chassis. The only reason to use headphones is to not annoy other people. And here's a test of the webcam here on the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7. This is in excellent lighting. So I have three LED lights on this side. I've got four LED lights over here. As you can hear, the audio quality is not that great, but the noise canceling is above average. And the picture itself is 720p and especially blocky. Fortunately, there's not that much graininess on the walls, but still the picture quality is... Uh, a little bit below average. And here's a test of the webcam in poor lighting. I only have one LED light on me on this side. The color compensation is very, very good <laughs> because uh, in other webcams, this side of my face would be completely dark. But as you can see, the motion still suffers. It is very, very poor. And the picture itself gets even more blurry in low light. System performance of the Slim 7 is kind of a mixed bag. Sure, with 8 gigs of hyperfast DDR4X memory, you won't feel like you're missing out that much in normal day-to-day -day use. Web browsing is sufficiently speedy, and even in best battery mode, the low-powered Core i5 blasts through 1080p video, streaming in at 60 frames per second. The mixed bag is because of graphical glitches in the Windows user interface. Before updates, the mouse pointer tended to leave behind a copy of itself in certain windows. This problem disappeared after several updates, but I'm still getting the occasional black screen blip and weird resizing issues on the desktop itself. Lenovo's Vantage software is very intrusive and has to control all kinds of Windows features in order to maintain the ridiculously high battery life. In the grand scheme of things, it works very well, but you do have to put up with glitches every once in a while. Using a OneDrive folder for my desktop backgrounds also seemed to be causing issues, but switching back to the OneDrive folder didn't immediately cause the problem to reappear, so don't at me on that. The opening screen and the closing screen always function perfectly, so it's definitely a software problem and not a hardware issue. You should also really get to know Lenovo's Vantage software to get the most out of your laptop. It's here that you'll find handy dandy options like enabling passive cooling or having the laptop turn on when you lift up the lid. On to gaming. The dedicated NVIDIA MX350 is not supposed to be a gamer's GPU. 
It only has 2 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM and about half the capability of the GTX 1650. Well, that's the official story at least. In today's reality, even the lowly MX350 packs as much punch as the GTX 960M, the mainstream GPU that's only two generations old. In other words, notebook GPUs have come so far, now they hear. Well, almost. Yes, the MX350 still packs some healthy frame rates for those with low expectations, but the sad part is it refuses to play certain games, most notably those that use Unreal Engine 4. That means games like Snake Pass, Spyro Reignited, and Superland don't want to load, and also I can't get COD Blops 4 to run. So if you're buying this notebook expecting to game on it, there may be some dire disappointments. For the games you can play, stick to low details and low resolutions. Much older games, like Kingdoms of Amalur, can still run at a constant 60 frames per second with everything set to max. However, for 90% of the 3D games you'll be playing, all settings will be in low preset prison. If you really hate having free time, go ahead and hunt for those precious two areas that can be raised by a tick. And if that's your game, hey, I don't judge. In other news, the Slim 7 actually lets you play at 60 frames per second while on battery power. The Legion series of notebooks also allows this, but the IdeaPad Gaming 3i I just reviewed doesn't. So you could technically have better frame rates than an official gaming laptop with gaming in the name of it. That's pretty cool. What's also cool is my segue to my spot now. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going there. Hey, the coolest part is gaming on battery power won't drag down the FPS, and while the Slim 7 does get pretty warm, it won't cook on your lap while gaming. And finally, the fan noise cannot compete with the awesome speakers in the slightest. For the bottom line, how well does the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7 fit into the skinny jeans that are your notebook needs? Well, there are some serious drawbacks to take into consideration, most notably the fact that you're stuck with the memory you buy into. 8 gigs for normal people, 16 gigs for people with apparently too much money to burn, I mean, <coughs> those that get an amazing deal. The display is a mirror, and the power button will drive you crazy if you use USB thingies. Oh yeah, and the graphical glitches that may or may not rear their ugly heads. Like I said, it's definitely a software problem, so it can be updated into non-existence. If the graphical glitches get fully patched out or somehow don't happen for you, the sexiness of this notebook is hard to deny. It's lightweight, quick, has a backlit keyboard, and stupendous battery life. You can take it anywhere you'll need in a pinch, and if you want something better than this that's more powerful and just as portable, you're looking at paying out the nose for a Dell XPS because that's the only place to go from here. So if you've got about $800 and you need a capable PC that's also ultra portable, this is where your search begins. In conclusion, students get a thumbs up. Yes, it's the perfect notebook for students if it works and is reliable 100% of the time. Okay, it also gets half a thumb because some games don't even play, which means all the more time you'll have for studying. <laughs> right. Casual gamers can totally pick this up. It even games full frame rate off the plug. Sure, it'll last for an hour and a half only if you're playing Tomb Raider, but come on, who plays Tomb Raider for that long anyway? Competitive gamers should probably sleep on it. No, seriously, put it under your old deflated pillow and sleep on it. It's like the perfect thickness. Say goodbye to your neck pain. Desktop replacement users can consider it. With Thunderbolt 3, you can set up your hub for multiple monitors, and the low-powered Core i5 can crunch your numbers, but demanding apps that like to eat memory for breakfast will struggle in the lower tier configurations. Home users, this is perfect. Buy it. Doesn't get any better than this, as long as it doesn't have any glitches. Also, the glossy screen is a setback, but shouldn't be a deal breaker. This has been a review of the Lenovo Slim 7 here on Thieges Notebook Review. If you at least appreciated the video, like and subscribe. I have more great content in the pipeline already. You're gonna love it. Hey, thanks for watching the video, and you guys have a good night.